Hello everyone at Luke Rides. Luke Rides is back. And for a long, long time, the coronavirus has stopped us from being able to visit what is like church for us motorcyclists as bikers. You bastard! Like the church of motorcycles. And now Luke Rides and we're finally getting a chance to spend some time at church. That's Motorcycle Live. We've all missed it like crazy. All that's been is coronavirus and all the negativity and all the badness and we all just feel depressed and happy about it. And it's just nice to have, do, have something nice. And when it's down to motorcycles and you love motorcycles, whether that's naked, super bike, sport tour, you know, super naked, sports, uh, just naked motorcycles, it doesn't matter what it is, it could be a cruiser, but as long as you love this feel of an engine, you love petrol going bang and feeling the road and wheels, uh, two wheels, that's all that matters. So let's get ourselves in Motorcycle Live and get ourselves cracking. It's showtime. Hi everybody, it's like we've gone to church. <laughs> We are now approaching the Ducati stand over here. We're going to see the latest super bike, super naked uh, motorcycles from Ducati for 2022. So what we've got here is we've got Ducati's latest super naked, which is the V4. So there's no fairings whatsoever. You've got the aerodynamic panels that help keep the front end down, but SP version so Ducati do this whole thing where they have the standard version and you get the like the S model or well, now it's the SP model where you get all the fancy upgrades. Uh, the worst thing that Luke Rides can see here is the matte finish um, because the matte finish is really difficult to try and keep clean so even if you use like car wash you have to use like a, a matte matte formulated car wash just to clean these panels so it looks very very pretty now but once it starts getting dirty and because she's not shiny she's going to show up all the imperfections all the road salt she's going to show up all the dirt she's going to show up all the crap uh, which is really annoying that's why Luke Rides love shiny finishes because they're better lasting and they hide better all the detritus and all the rubbish on the road but apart from that We've got the V4 engine, so that's over 200 horsepower. Um, but the way this engine's been, the Super Naked engine's been designed by Ducati is that it's actually not easy to wheelie this. And uh, you wouldn't think it, would you? For 200 horsepower, that rear wheel has been tortured. But that's quite expensive. So carbon fiber rear wheel, carbon fiber front wheel, which is something that we're also seeing on the BMW's latest Superbike, which is quite interesting metal pegs as well on the left hand side for grip so that's really really good drive clutch you wouldn't expect to see that on the modern super naked it's kind of weird because the clutches are submerged in oil so why they want to do that is just kind of maybe it's performance thing who's to say and again it's very got those those ducati ducks at the front to help aerodynamics because there's no there's no fairings you've got no protection from the wind so you're literally going to get all the buffeting so this is only good for like up to 100 miles an hour before the buffeting is just too much but it's, it's going to be bags of fun absolutely insane even less than 100 miles an hour and that's what these super nakeds are about it's about having fun letting less than 100 miles an hour you've got a massive gold forks as well up front you got this LED light, you've got that Audi German style Xeons up front as well, so that's quite nice. Uh, Luke Rides probably doesn't want to see the price tag because it would just be outrageous, but yeah, of course it's outrageous, it's like 28 grand. Um, you get Brembo's, of course, Super Naked, so you get the latest Brembo's as well, front and rear, uh, ABS, scoring ABS. Self-leading master cylinder, that's a new technology that Luke Rice never seen before. You've got four-wheel electronic suspension as well as marble roads, aluminium rear frame and yeah 208 horsepower and you've got to think to yourself that's 208 horsepower with the catalytic converter. So imagine deleting the catalytic converter, full titanium right to the cylinders. Oh my god, that would just be absolutely insane, which is really really cool. 
Uh, it's just nice and simple. They're very... Uh, super bikes would destroy it, don't get me wrong, but as just a toy, I suppose if you've got those sort of funds to waste, then that's not a bad choice. It's either the Z1000 or something like this. As you're, you're super naked, go bonkers, do crazy stuff, go really, really fast at low speeds. The massive intercoolers up front. I mean, look at that. You've got like the main radiator, and then you've got another radiator down the bottom because it's producing so much power and torque. It has to have all that extra cooling. So it's like, whoa, liquid cooling, baby. And then you've got a small display up front, which is probably, probably could read it pretty well, but only a test ride would tell you that, really. And then you've got those aggressive ducks at the front, and oh. It is exotic. It's like the Kawasaki Z1000. It's just the pinnacle of what a naked is. And power, torque, insanity without being on a superbike. You know? Very pretty. So that's Ducati's latest super naked over here. So now we move on to this section here, which is like the standard super naked. Oh, Street Fighter V2. It looks like this is how Ducati are, are going now. So it looks like they're pretty much replacing the monster and they're just going to Street Fighters now as they're like naked motorcycles. You can see it, there's no, there's no fairings. You've just got those coloured panels like the tank. And then you've got LED, LEDs. They're non-carbon as well, but that's fine. Look at the diamond cut on that. I mean, look at the shape of those super naked aloe wheels wow and v2 as well so that's going to sound quite nice but then it would do because it's a v2 you can have a pillion on the back if you want to but would you want to mm, don't know and then you got rear hugger not much protection for the rider so you can imagine a lot of rubbish is going to be thrown at you but at least it's as extended as it can be so Ducati have tried very very hard and then again liquid cooled as well that's where you've got a big a big wide space at the middle as well because all that liquid cooling you need that space and then the aggressive ducks at the front I think Luke rides really prefers the red uh, that's how it should be on a Ducati naked or at least it should be on the super naked it should be that Ducati red whereas the SP model back there at 28 grand it's matte it's not glossy and it's not red like that's how a Ducati should be it should be red that's just their color that's just Ducati's color like green is to Kawasaki but hey Brembo's up front as well massive stopping power again small display up front hopefully you should be able to read. I'd imagine you should be able to read that. V2. Oh, the switch gear. Yeah, switch gear. Yeah, yeah, press it. Oh. You've got buttons over here. So you got main beam. Ah, right, where you can move on the onboard computer and you can change the menus that you have at your disposal. So that's what that does. And then you've got your indicator. Start. Stream is that way. Yeah, that way start. Uh, steering dampener as well, which is great. That classic Ducati feeling as well. That feels that actually feels like the Monster 1100 Super Naked. Very soft seat, quite thick. It's nice it's got that styling as well. So that's just the standard naked. So that's quite good. Very, very cool. So what is it like sitting on the Ducati naked? Let's find out. We'll get our opportunity when we get it. Even there's massive pipes in the back, you see that? Like massive fuck off great pipes like whoa. <laughs> Very cool. Definitely love that Ducati red. That's how a Ducati should be. Indicators are sticking out, but then it is a naked. It's got a Penegale superbike style rear quite interesting Brembo's up front again LED maybe no I don't, no, I don't think there's an LED they don't look LED I think there would be LED though because it's 2020 
2022 naked, so you think it'll be LED. You've got massive, that's interesting. So you've got V2, which is two less cylinders than the Ducati Super Naked over there. And no, the, the coolers are not as wide or as big, they're more, they're actually smaller quite interesting we still got that aggressive styling up the front aggressive LED German S style Xenons up front again LED as well Ducati a lot of the technology has come from the Germans so the Germans have really upped Ducati's games so they've given them good engineering better electronics better design work better engineering Ducati the, the, the Germans have brought Ducati to where they should be and uh, not a lot of people know that actually it's a lot of German influence underneath. So it can be Ducati all it likes, but actually underneath there's a lot of German technology going on, which is quite interesting. But a lot of people forget that because they don't know. Interesting of the shock as well. It's like running along the frame. It's quite interesting. Ah, oh, they're not quite the same on the Super Naked. See, the Super Naked, the shock is down. Olin's. While on the Naked, the shock is sideways. Isn't that an interesting difference? New Christ has only just noticed it. Wow. Isn't that cool? Very cool. It doesn't look like we're going to get an opportunity. And then as you move along, you've got the, well, maybe the Ducati Superbike. Let's have a look. No, it's the Super Sports. So it's the V2. Yeah, that's the V2 Panigale. So that is just Super Sport. So it's not as violent as the V4. The V4 is insane. That's just kind of Super Sport. So she's very, very fast and powerful, but not into your handlebars scary powerful so that's quite nice it's got those italian colors as well so it's all showy it's got that green red white color scheme as well love the little carbon down there that's quite nice single side to swing arm as well oh a bit of scratching down here boot marks damn it that's quite interesting not seen that from ducati before again lots of colors it's pretty, very pretty, and that rear end as well, the German Audi-esque lighting system up front, massive Brembo's as well, Brembo's front and rear, massive stopping power, light cluster as well, no LED lights though, on the indicators. The rears are not LED, but only the front. <laughs> right. Dashboard is small. It's very much like a Kawasaki ZX10 Superbike, where the dashboard is very, very small, because all that matters is your revs. It doesn't matter how fast you're going, because you're going so fast, there's nothing behind you. What matters is how much revs you have, because that is a race bike. So a race bike is about the revs, Shock is sideways, which is quite interesting. That V2 as well. Feels like Alcantara here, possibly Alcantara. The Catty badge on the rear. Massive forks up front. Very pretty. Very pretty indeed. Rear hugger, it's nice that Ducati have tried to extend it as far as they can to try and stop all the rubbish from getting to your legs. Let's see what a super sport feels like. What a super sport feels like, Governor. Oh. oh, bloody hell. Hmm. Not aggressive like the ZX10 Superbike. Not aggressive. It's got the same posture as the X10 where your legs are right up here because you're either going to bank her over like that, or you're going to bank her over like that. It feels very good. And again, steering dampener as well up front, which is what you would expect on Super Sports. 
and super bikes. The screen's very, very small. Very small. To Bayless. 30th anniversary edition. You can imagine something like that. <laughs> Oh, the locals are loving the Ducati Super Sport, aren't ya? <laughs> you're down like this. It's not aggressive like the ZX10 Superbike. It's not. I think the ZX10 Superbike is more focused as a race bike. Whereas this is kind of softer. Mm, not brilliant. But if you're into, if you want a super sport, this is going to be one of your top picks. You will have to have belt changes every so often because she's a V2, so no chain driving cams. As long as you're happy to do belt changes every two years, then you're all good to go, aren't you? So that's quite cool. What else did Catty have in store for Luke Rides? Uh, then we got the Scramblers. Yeah, not interesting. Uh, then you got the Super Sport. So this is Ducati's attempt at making a sport tourer. So it's not insane like a Superbike, but it's nice and soft. But it will go fast when you want it to. When you look at the sides, oh, where it stands. Now you've got a massive cooler up front. I can't quite tell if it's water cooled though. You've got the Penegali esque shape at the front, but you don't expect Xenons like the Ducati Superbike or the Super Naked. It's going to be like halogen bulbs on the first generation Super Sport. Super Sport S? Eh? Maybe. Again, you've got a bit of a matte finish going on, which is not easy to keep clean. That is not going to look nice once all the rubbish on the road, all the bugs, all the crap hits are. Not going to look very nice at all. Not a shiny finish. It's very Ducati, it's got a lot of styling, it's got the bulges on the side. Comfortable seat, you can actually have that rear section taken away so it's a proper pillion seat. Which is what you'd expect from the sports tour, really. You'd kind of expect to be able to carry your wife, you know, your amazing girlfriend, be able to carry her on, or family. No, no, no. Short hugger, though. Very short hugger. Kind of, yeah. 9.50. So, again, uh, this is a V2 as well. So, V2, so you got that, that twin cylinder noise. From the super from the super sport, but he is not the Panigale super sport. It's kind of Luke Royce never understood why Ducati called this a super sport when it's not actually a super sport. It's a sport tourer, but Ducati have got to give it a fancy name, haven't they? Or it won't sell. So that's that. And then as we move over to here, we've got the off-road Multistradas. Tours, tall, thick seat. Oh, LEDs up front. Woo. LED handlebars, guards. That's a V2 as well. So you have to change the belts every two years. And it loves a bit of shell oil, engine oil, which is exactly like Luke Rides. Ducati Super Naked, the 1100 Monster. That likes shell oil. Bigger display on this one too, so that makes it a little easier to read. A lot of controls as well. It's got like cruise control, mode modes, so you can change the traction control settings. That's kind of, yeah. I like the red wheels. <laughs> well, it doesn't have much to say, really. It's just an off-road motor, off-road adventure motorcycle. And then you got them red. 
Luke Christ suspects this is the bigger, the bigger model. This is like the V4 version now. Yeah, it is. This, so this is the V4S version of the Multistrada. Even the front intakes as well. There's a bit more styling going on here. So you've got that aggressive gill, that sort of like fangs up front. LEDs, uh, the indicators are actually integrated into the body as well, which is a nice touch. Massive Ducati V4 engine, which is not the superbike version. It's kind of a really detuned, really held back version of the V4. Yeah, very easy to kick these these pieces though. I've seen the marks in them already. Oh. And this one, if the server going on the road, it needs new um, new panniers. They are scuffed to hell. Again, you've got a lovely Ducati red. And even the collectors, you've got two pipes going off those cylinders there. Shock is about 45 degrees. Whoa, look at this. So this is, because she's liquid cooled, she has to call the cooling coming out of the V4 somehow out of the engine. So the actual radiators and the cooling fans are on the sides. What does that remind you of? Actually reminds you of a little bit of Bondo going on. Interesting. But the thing is, don't stick your finger in there because you might lose it. That's the worry. So you literally can stick your finger in there. If not the cooling fan activates, you might lose your finger. Or a little kid just goes, oh, no, you didn't even have this thing. And then, like, ah. cut it off. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder what happened here. It's kind of requires a bit sure. Um, so you have that. Um, and then you have. Acroprovic V4 again. But why is there a difference? That's it, yeah. That's Marty Strata V4. But that one's got the single sided swing arm, that one doesn't. That's weird. Why did that one get a single sided swing arm and that the other one doesn't? 170 horsepower. Pulse firing order. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And again, don't stick your fingers in the cooling fan. Damn. Had to cut your finger off. Oh, God. Somebody in Ducati didn't think about that. They didn't think about a little kid just going, didn't think about that. It's interesting how the engine literally encompasses the Multistrada. Like, it's the thing you look at. LED, aggressive styling up front, gilds, carbon fibre. Lovely extended rear hunger, hugger there to try and keep all the road crap and salt off you. Massive Brembo's again, front and rear. Massive stopping power, lots of stopping power in Italian colours. So that's really, really nice. And then you have the monster, which you just know is going to be phased out at some point. You just know that the Ducati are going to phase it out. Because now they have Street Fighters, what's the point of the, of the monster? And though you have the integrated indicators, this isn't integrated. Have your Ducati merchandise, Ducati, 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 and it's all, it's all very nice. There's that. Dot to motorcycles. Whoa. What? As you come away from the Ducati stand. Oh my God, look at that. That's how a motorcycle used to be. Literally, the brakes, 
Where are the brakes? <laughs> Where are they? And that little cog there is probably to tell you roughly, it is roughly how fast you're going. Oh my god, look at that little tiny, tiny engine. I think a lot of work has gone into it to restore it though. Kind of make it what it used to look like when it was new. Original registration marks the play for historic interest only. My god. Whoa! Hell, whoa, whoa, is that you? Woo! Wow! There's two point <laughs> shotgun pipes coming out. What is it? <laughs> it's kind of like push rods. Oh, it's a Kawasaki. Spirit. Oh, that looks like raw. Oh, it's like it's a little naughty motorcycle. It wants to go off road and be an absolute beast. It's got sensors. So maybe it is fuel injected, but it just looks like it's old school. But it is fuel injected. Oh, that's pretty. That's pretty. Bloody hell, look at two. Oh, she's a parallel. But she is air cooled parallel. Oh. Duh. <laughs> that is vintage. Oh my god, there is so much to see. You can literally have two days of motorcycle live, and that's not enough. Oh my god, look at these old motorcycles. Modern two, model 200 Royal Enfield. What? Wow. A lot going on here. Okay, so we've gone to the Ducati stand. The next stand we want to find is another manufacturer. So we're going to have a look at that now. See what's out there. Oh, we might just have a Yama 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 ha. Oh, let's go and have a looky looky. And this is Yamaha. Oh God, everybody. What has happened to motorcycle life? Yamaha are not showing their super nakeds, the motorcycles, the super bikes. All they have is a shop. I mean, touch to enter. What, we look at their super bikes and motorcycles through a screen. It's not the same as seeing it for real. It's not the same. <laughs> Yamaha, rev your heart. But you're not revving your own heart, are you, Yamaha? Where are you? It's very, very sad. This is all that Yamaha have a motorcycle life, and it's a shadow. It's pathetic compared to what they used to be. How could Yamaha say rev your heart when Yamaha aren't revving their heart here, being proud of their, their creations and showing them off? So that's Yamaha stand for you, everybody. And it's a disappointment. <laughs> We even got people go, wait! <laughs> right, so now we are at Lex Moto here at Motorcycle Live. So Lex Moto is a Chinese manufacturer and they don't build the most powerful motorcycles. They certainly stick to quite small engine capacity, but this is the Chinese market. They, they probably, the amount of Chinese people that actually have something like a 1,000 is a lot smaller than what we have here in Europe. So we have got a Leximoto scooter here for a little tiny 1,899 pounds. You get a 50cc engine. Don't even bother talking about horsepower and torque because it's a 50cc engine. And it's red. It's red and white. It's red and white. It's got even gilded at the back. <laughs> Like, well, fair play to Leximoto trying. Is it good? Spindly discs up front, red calipers. 
Should we sit? Should we sit on Lexi Moto, everybody at Luke Christ? Let's sit on a Lexi Moto. Come on, let's sit on a Lexi Moto. Yes, a Lexi Moto. Yes, let me Lexi Moto. Yes, it's very, very comfortable. It's got indicators, got headlights, got a horn. Starter button's red. Starter button's red. <laughs> it's got ignition. He is hard, very hard, very hard seat, very good seat, yeah, mirrors are big, that's <laughs> pretty much that's all Luke Christ has to say really, so I don't know anything more you can say. Well, it's nice the stitching going on here from a Chinese manufacturer in blue and silver, decent paint finish as well, look right to give them that. And then this is where you get into Lexi Moto, kind of trying to be sporty. Um, you've got a front, kind of a front daytime running light. And yeah, it's kind of quite Honda-esque, isn't it? Um, it is a, oh, this is a 125. If you've even got spindly front discs. Oh my god. Give Lexi Moto the, the wheels do look substantial. Gonna have a lot of wind protection on something like this. Massive display as well up front, so that's quite easy to read. And then you've got like a naked hawk back. Yeah, and Lexi Moto. Lexi Moto. And then scooters. Scooters. This one. Probably 50cc. Oh my god, it's a 125. <laughs> it's quite stylish, 125. Uh, again, scooters. We're in a mix of different colours, really. Lexi Moto's attempt at a naked. And it's quite. Uh, one, two, five. Very small. Very small. Look, Luke Rides is not biased. You will sit on any motorcycle. Very light throttle. Very light. Wow. It's my proper button. Got mood. Mood. Moodies. <laughs> mood. Got mood. One, two, five. <laughs> Whoa, electric! You got an electric, electric, uh, electric something. Electric scooter? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> it's like electric scooter, everybody at Luke Rides. But for Lexi Moto, it's probably got like LEDs and, and like everything. Ah, got a pamphlet. To read the pamphlet, double up read pamphlet. It's going to tell us, isn't it? 4,000! <gasps> 10 watts. Keyless entry? <gasps> oh my god, it's got keyless entry! Got ABS? <laughs> Antelope brakes? Not the sound of the spin cycle! Mm. Yeah, prepared to be bored. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's the worry with electric motorcycles, because they don't make any noise at all. There's no feedback from the engine, and all you hear is the wheels spinning. It's boring. It's, there's nothing to stimulate your mind. There's nothing making your mind think. It's just... It's just a motorcycle. It's not... It doesn't have any soul. LED, uh, again, it's a scooter. Scooter over here, Lexi O8. Oh my god, how Tron is that? Would you like a Lexi O8? So that's where Lexi Moto is. So they are pretty much scooters, a kind of sporty 125, naked, hark back to all the motorcycles, and the odd scooter. But fit and finish actually looks okay actually feels okay. 
I think Leximoto have come a little bit further than they used to be. You can kind of look at the engine and kind of go, oh my god, actually fuel injected quality assured. Literally, Lexi Motor had to stab out on motorcycles. Uh -uh. Um, there are more Lexi models over here. Random brand over there. But nobody cares about. Um, BSA. Welcome everyone to BSA. BSA stands for Birmingham Small Arms. So you probably remember BSA from a long time ago, from the 70s, the 60s, the 50s, the 80s, but the Japanese started showing how a motorcycle should be built and BSA died because of it. Because BSA didn't modernize, they didn't keep up with the Japanese. They stuck to old traditions, they stuck to old designs and they never made it. So we didn't see BSA once they died out. We haven't seen BSA even even early 2000s have not seen them they've been dead but the indians have bought the right to the brand and have come back and the indians they've already brought royal enfield and really brought royal enfield back and building good quality motorcycles and now the indians are doing the same with bsa which is really interesting because why are the Indians want to do that? So this is some of the, oh my God, look at that, and look at that engine. It's like, there are fins on that. It's fucking huge. <laughs> BSA Gold Star, oil level. Let's look at what BSA have to offer. 1942, oh my God, that was a fuel tank. It was literally a cylinder. <laughs> Huh. Literally, that's all you had, cylinders. <laughs> Looking like a tank. <laughs> God, how motorcycles have moved on. Right, this is where we're getting to BSA now. So let's see what they're going to do for the future in 2022. This is a BSA Gold Star. 652cc parallel by the looks of it big radiator up front it's sticking out a bit so you do see it it is kind of like in your face um looks nice interesting brembo rear brembo rears brembo's on a bsa wow paint finish looks really good got a bit of the union flag going on there Good quality, good decent finish from the engine casings. Rubber pegs to reduce vibrations. Massive twin. Air cooled, so no no cooling fan required. If you like that sort of style. Analog clocks. Huh. Even look at the tire, it's so thin. Whoa, look at that for engine casing. Fuel injected. <laughs> Shotgun pipes at the back. This is quite cool. What's nice is that BSA are sticking to like some of the color schemes that they used to use a long time ago so it's quite showy which is quite nice and they're using a bit of ducati-esque red going on here with the actual still like it was in the 70s and 60s actual bsa logo bsa on the headlight the van they seem quite proud of what they've created here radiator air-cooled engine so that helps reduce weight so that's quite interesting one massive great big pipe coming out of it it reminds you of some of the nostalgia doesn't it it's not like the precision 
and instruments of the Japanese. It's just rough. It's just rough. Analog clocks. Should we sit? Should we sit on a BSA? The BSA were dead. The BSA were dead a long time ago. Now they're coming back. Oh my god. Like, like Kenny. Oh my god, like Kenny. Kill Kenny. <laughs> oh. Uh, there's a bit of flex in that gear. Looks like that. See how low it is to the ground. Should we find out everyone at Luke Rides? Get ready to sit on the BSA. Woo! 2022. Uh, why are the clocks the wrong way round? Do you ask that, ironically, Christ? The, the zero, to 130, is like the zero doesn't start from the left hand side; it starts from the right hand side. So do the reds. Chunky, chunky switches, but okay, but okay, very plasticky, you can tell it's, it's plasticky, it's very um, finish I think it's gonna take a while before BSA just kind of get to where they want to be gear selector it's wobbly that's very old school it is comfortable see very light throttle yeah actually does feel Okay, if you're into a bit of nostalgia. Mm. I would leave Christ to own something like this. No, and look at this, look at the paintwork. A lot of little scratches in the paintwork. Yeah, a lot of little scratches. Yeah. Killian. Fix C. Feels quite good though. Brembo's as well, up front and rear. It's quite nice. And then at that point we've got black and chrome. Silver and chrome. It looks like it's going to be just one model. Really, it's going to be like the gold star. Gold star. <laughs> it's just different colour schemes. It is, isn't it? Gold star. It's just, it's just different colour schemes. So, 650 something air cooled engine. Love the big exhaust pipes that come out of it because that's quite classic. Classic engine casing that the, the gearbox and the engine has that that wonky esque old school styling, but modern fuel injection, air cooled so no liquid cooling, no radiator. If you're into just a motorcycle, that has a bit of fun and. We'll bring an all nostalgia to people because they will, will wouldn't they will look at a BSA and go, whoa, they remember that. This is a good choice. Well yeah, done. Not bad. BSA. Not bad. Your first attempt at building motorcycles again. Very cool. So that's where we are with BSA here at Motorcycle Live. And now let's move on to the next manufacturer. Got it's a Ducati Super Super Duper Bug. Oh yeah. 999. Woo! Very cool. Welcome to the manufacturer that builds the among the most beautiful, most insane most talky 
most powerful superbikes in the world would also build epic, epic, gorgeous machines. And it's green, and it's Japanese, and it's made in Japan. <laughs> Let's go to Church of Kawasaki. <laughs> Whoa, ZX10 RR Superbike. Oh my god. Oh my god, she has a gold chain. Oh, oh, oh. oh, look at that rear seat cluster. Oh my god. That is absolutely stunning. That is among the most stunning colour schemes Luke Cry's has seen for Superbikes. Look at that. That is like from the future. That's like Tron. <laughs> Acroprovic, oh titanium, right down the cylinders. Oh, LED up front. That aggressive front design going on there. It's like artwork. It's like Japanese exotica. Showa front forks, massive Brembo's up front. Real stopping power for 200 mile an hour insanity that is the ZX10 Superbikes. <laughs> LED indicators front with you just know what's going to happen will be an integrated light cluster aftermarket to tidy that rear section up look at the hole on the Acroprovic it's absolutely huge imagine the blue flames coming out of that puppy green oh my god green <laughs> green alloys stunning tank God, a massive titanium. This is how thick those exhaust pipes are. They're absolutely huge. No pillion, but you wouldn't have a pillion on a ZX10 Superbike because she wouldn't be able to hold on. Oh, oh my God! Look at that. That cruise control on a Superbike. Oh my god, it has cruise control, everybody. It has cruise control on a superbike. Look how very alive it is. Oh, so light. Oh my god. Brembo master cylinders up front as well. That is, a, that is going to be a stunning display up front. A very shift indicator built at the top. So as a race bike, you're not looking down there. You're looking there. So your shift indicator is right where your eyesight is going to be, which is what you do on the racetrack. So that is again race bike, super bike technology going on there. Ideal, really smart of Kawasaki to build it right where you're looking. Because on a super bike, you're not looking at your speedo. You're not. If anything, you might be looking at your revs, but you're not looking down there. You're looking at where you're going to bank her into the corner and then dip her down and then come out at 100 miles an hour or more. Electronic, computer managed Olins up front. Oh my god, look at that. It's so beautiful. The Kawasaki frame. Oh my god. Even the fuel tank just feels nice opening up the fuel tank. Oh my god. That is just sex, isn't it? I mean, my, my God. Mirror is useless, of course, on a superbike. That, what Kawasaki have done is they've refined it. They've refined the ZX10 superbikes down to an art now. Oh my God, it just feels right. It feels like you're supposed to be here. Oh my God. Amazing. Kawasaki, you've done well. You've done super bikes well. Oh my god. That is just perfection. And then you've got jumping from 200 mile an hour insanity super bikes. You now just go down to like little 125s. With fuel injected, quality finish. Really nice, just nice finish on the engine casings. Good finish on the panels. Tactile seat as well. Tactile seat for your pillion. Even the switch gear feels nice. This is a 125 we're talking about here. And it just feels good. 
<coughs> M125. They do. Oh, and then you get your kind of third version of the 125, which is Kamazaki Racing Arrow. It's quite nice, isn't it? As a 125, and you get LED instrument cluster up front, digital. That is quite nice. That is actually quite nice. What? Holy crap. 650. ZX6 RR. They've got Kawasaki kind of going back to the W800. It's going back to Kawasaki's older designs. That nostalgic look up the front. Pushwad look up the front. The LED, LED headlights, 800 cc, so it's going to actually ride really well. Powerful discs that are front, just protection, and then you have Kawasaki Super Naked, which is the head Z. H2 and that supercharged 200 horsepower insanity once you delete that catalytic converter and put a full titanium system holy mother that is just bonkers with green frame and then you have the ZX10R Superbike. So small. Definitely want to delete the rear seat because the pillion's not going to hold on. Once you have full titanium system, no caps, dyno tuned, and speed limiter removed. Oh yeah. Oh, that feels good. And that beautiful front. It's nice how as well, Kawasaki, what they did was Ducati had the aerodynamic fins playing out. Whereas what Kawasaki have done is they've actually built the aerodynamic fins into the frames and the fairings themselves. So they've designed it into the Superbike. So it just keeps that ZX10 sleekness about it. And then get LED fronts as well, LED lights up front, very, very nice. Oh my god, look at that. Massive Brembo's up front, massive, massive brakes, shower front forks, Brembo master cylinder. What a super bike, absolute insanity. Kawasaki really come a long way. And good price too. Very nice. Quick shifters. Quick shifter as standard now. Very interesting. So the question is, do you get you do? Hey, the shift indicator! <laughs> that is super bike. Oh my god. And then you've got the black black version. Naughty black of the ZX10 super bike. Stunning rear light cluster. But the green and white's where it's at. Definitely. Green and white. That's Kawasaki's colours. That's the super bike colours right there. Still very nice. That ZX10R. Oh, you just didn't want to wear it. You just literally have her in the garden as a showpiece. <laughs> I mean, you just don't want to look at her every day. Look at that. Retro special. Even on the racetrack, look at that. That is stunning. 
as follows. Very interesting. Stunning, stunning, beautiful motorcycle to play Kawasaki. You get the Z900. This is the inline four naked. It's a quite interesting, like, like a lot of Tron theme going on here from Kawasaki. A lot of Tron themes. It's quite interesting, really. The Tron theme as well. Beautiful colour scheme of the Versus Thousands. Whoa. H2SX. Super Tora. Whoa. She looks big, doesn't she? actually meet a, a H2SX in the flesh and she looks big like just a big motorcycle green shock at the rear <laughs> oh look at that see Kawasaki have done a bit of a styling update as well but they put the front radar here cruise control See what she'd like to actually step on though. Love the oh, metallic green. Oh fuck. You will kick your panniers though, which is a bit of a bugger really. Yeah. Whoa, it's keyless entry. Keyless start. Cruise control mode. She does feel big, doesn't she? Just, just feels big. Feel big. Brembo master cylinders up front. Yeah. Front brakes, Brembo. This feels like a very nice place to be. E5, E10. You don't want to put super premium in the supercharged, super tour like this. Even the gears, even the switch gear feels amazing. It feels really smooth, soft, just feels nice. Once you've got a pair of gloves on, this is just going to feel really nice. Pass, your little flash to say, I'm about to overtake you, bugger, get out of my way. <laughs> Supercharged, 200 horsepower, Tora. Yeah. Very sloped tank. Up front, very sloped. You feel very cocooned in her. You feel like you're very, very cocooned. Like you could do 200 miles on a super tour like this, and you just feel, yeah, I've done 50. Very interesting. What a sight, though. But kicking your, oh, kicking your poor panniers. Yeah, what a super tourer. Uh, there we go, H2SX going round. Love the diamond style. That reminds Luke Fry to envy Augusta. Those alloy wheels. Oh, sorry, dude. Look at the thick exhaust pipes. Really thick. Whoa. Looks substantial. Very nice. And the way the cables are as well, they look braided. But you definitely want to get rid of that exhaust system. Is that just... That's, that's the only thing that lets the H2SX down, is the ugly exhaust system. Delete that and put a nice titanium on her. And it's kind of as well, that front radar Maybe you wouldn't notice it once she's dead. once she's low. You wouldn't notice it. What a beast! And then you have your gorgeous Z thousand SX, which you naturally aspirate as Fort Tora from Kawasaki. Cruise control, beautiful color scheme. Love the LED lights. That aggressive. That Ducati S style beauty that goes on here with a thin design up front. Very aerodynamic but elegant at the same time. Very nice place to be. It's interesting though. The 
have so far. No. H2 Superbike. No mentions of it. We've got the Versus. Off road. Off road. But no H2. The H2SX, but not the actual H2. Which is interesting. So maybe the H2 is no longer in production with Kawasaki. That's why you can't instantly find it, you can't instantly see it. Big focus is on the super bikes. Yeah. Interesting. And that's where we are with Kawasaki then. So a focus on the latest LX10 Superbikes, a focus on the H2SX Tora. With the Z1000 being kind of mixed in a bit. We met 125s. Oh, you gotta love that. Oh, we gotta look at that, baby. Oh, look at that exhaust pipe. <laughs> that is so thick. It's so wide. It's like, whoa. Oh my gosh, titanium. Oh my gosh, that, that, literally your hand can fit inside the hole. <laughs> oh my god, that's stunning. That is just super bike. My god. Look at this. Quick connectors on the rear Brembo's. Ah. Uh, big hole again, feet hand in. Only on the super bikes. Oh, wow. Wow. Makes you feel very proud. If you own a Kawasaki, to be quite proud of the brand. How far it's come. Very cool. Next place, of course, is BMW Motorrad. We go to the BMWs now here at Big Grind. And let's see what BMW have for us here. We have uh Taurus? <laughs> uh yeah. So F750 GSs. And they are well they even got paddiers in the back. So what is it then? Is it a twin? Oh love the love the display. Look at that. That display is like oh same bike. Yeah! Same bike. The only difference, lowered suspension, low seat. Ah. This is the base price, nine, nine two six, nine two six. So oh yeah. Six on ah, that so one. Mm. Feel the difference ah. in the on that one. That would be interesting. Yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah. Inside, Thank you, what dude. What you want to do is try it with both feet down. Yeah. And then try it with both feet down on that one. Ah, to see the difference. Exact same bike. Ah. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Oh, a very nice man over here. He <laughs> loves his motorcycles. He's like, oh, I really want to get into it. I love him. I'm an instructor. <laughs> I'm an instructor. <laughs> oh, get on. You can definitely put both. We can, you can definitely put both your feet down on this GS750. So this one's actually been lowered to make it easier to get your feet down and feel nice and stable and comfortable on this. The paintwork looks really nice. I like the F750, this kind of this style Tron styling going on here. And the as well the instrument cluster very easy to read. You have auxiliary port as well. Or maybe heated jackets. A USB port as well built into your beautiful F750 GS. With really nice feeling really nice feeling switch gear like really nice and gloves these will just feel amazing mirrors are quite small which is interesting again trying to be very careful and that's lowered seat height so what's it like if you stand on next model or the same model but 
Oh. What does it feel like? Uh, as well, different a different instrument cluster. Oh bloody hell. Definitely put your feet down on this baby. Oh, so maybe that one has uprated suspension when you're higher. This one's the lower down one. Whoa. Oh my god, it's like I drive. It's like I drive on a motorcycle. Woo. Oh my god, it's got mo, it's got mo buttons. Heating grips! More on stage! Three stages of heating grips! Oh my god. It even has a temperature sensor to tell you what the temperature is outside. How BMW is that? Quality fit and finish feels really nice. Love how bright as well the instrument cluster is at the front. It looks really sharp. So even in bad conditions where there's lots of rain, your visibility is crap. You can still see that display really clearly because it's a matte finish, not shiny. And because it's a matte finish, it means that you're not getting so much reflection back. Like you'd see on a lot of the Ducatis that use shiny screens because shiny screens look nice and it's like an iPhone, tablet and all that sort of stuff. It's a really thoughtful design here by BMW. And the seat feels really tactile, it feels really plush, really thick. And just feels, it feels nice. Pegs as well, rubber pegs. And looks like we have a bit of something going on here. It's 850. And that one, so this is twin cylinder model. Rally. Oh, it's got the spoked wheels and gold. Oh, off-road wheels and gold, baby. Yeah. That's quite nice. Uh, Adventure TE. Woo. Mm, matte colour scheme. That's going to be a pain to keep clean. Interesting design going on here. Yeah. Metal pegs. It's what you'd need on an off-road motorcycle. Sat nav. And that lovely matte display as well by BMW. So it's really easy to see, really easy to read. Thick exhaust pipes as well. Big cat though. Massive cat. Definitely want to do something about that because that is just huge. Brembo's front and rear, a massive stopping power. And then as we go along, we have very different color schemes of the GS. Yeah, different color schemes. Uh, a black shaft drive, shaft drive on this one. Very nice. No chain to have to worry about. I believe this one is. 12.50 Right, so this is boxed up That's the boxed up Boxed up Car Beast of an adventure Massive, massive touring motorcycle White colour scheme over here Ah, that's right, like for a little motorcycle, that is quite pretty. Really pretty. By BMW, very cool. And that could go along here. We have the F900, which is a naked 40 motorcycle by BMW. Feels good though, switch gear feels really good, lovely paint finish as well. F900 badging, so BMW quite proud of this. Beautiful switch gear. Keyless. Keyless entry, keyless start. And that roughly is. Actually, 105 horsepower. But you've got to consider that that's 105 horsepower with the cat, with the cat lake converter. So once you've deleted that, tuned her up, put her through the dyno, yeah, that's not going to be in terms of 5 horsepower, that's going to be more. And 
then we've got the massive 1250cc boxster version of the naked single sided swing arm big naked lovely brakes massive brakes 145 5 horsepower but again that's with the catalytic converter so once you delete that catalytic converter oh yeah that, look at the size of those cylinders look at them freaking huge Huh? Huge. Whoa. And then we have BMW's Super Naked, the S1000R. Red and pink work. Love that. Very circular tank. Massive Brembo's front and rear. Gold bronze. So we're reminiscent of the Superbike engine, LED indicators front and rear, love the alloy wheels, bit of a design going on there, big discs, big forks, imagine deleting the cat off that, oh yeah, red shot, lovely hugger, that is one beast real beast oh my god really bad. inducing I'm beast that is that's 165 horsepower but that's standard so once you've deleted the catalytic converter gone for a dyno tune mapped the computers to the titanium system oh yeah that's definitely over 165 horsepower and loads and loads of torque so that is insane and that's the naked so this is only good for about 100 miles an hour before the buffeting is too much and then bmw motorsport colors Oh, carbon fiber, baby. Look at that. Carbon fiber, carbon fiber. M. Very nice. Love the display as well. Again, that matte finish. Really smart BMW. Very, very smart. Very quality. Love it. Love the motorsport color scheme. Really cool. And then you have the super bike. Oh. Standard, you're looking at 207 horsepower. Once you deleted that cat and got a full titanium system, Dino Tunda mapped the computer systems. Oh, just absolute sanity. With heat grips, boost control, and all that luxury BMW ness. And again, the only thing that matters is at that point is your rev counter on the superbike, not the speed. You don't buy a superbike because you want to do the speed limit. No, no, no. Paint finish is fantastic. That is absolutely stunning. Very stunning. Very pretty. Love it. Ah, oh, those motorsport colours. Ah. Oh. Oh my god, look at those front calipers. Oh yeah. That is sexy. Oh my god, that's pretty. That is ZX10 level. Pretty. Oh my god. Massive front forks. Massive front bows. Get a full titanium system onto her. Perfection, absolute perfection. The only gripe the Gride's ever had with the S1000 RR is it is kind of a shame that BMW didn't integrate the rear light clusters. They didn't integrate the rear light cluster. That is a shame. Look at that. Even the type, even Acrobatic, you fit your hand in there. <laughs> Look how big the hole is! Oh my god! It's like fucking wow! <laughs> like the ZX10 R Superbikes. See a bit of Kawasaki going on there in the BMW. Mm. Like sport colours. Wow! These are the. Oh, this is the M's. So 
it is S thousand S thousand R R R. Very cool. So what have we learnt here from BMW? What we've learnt here is there's a real good mix of superbikes in that BMW Boxster engine as well and touring GSs, super naked, naked, just a nice good mix of good motorcycles here from BMW and even have a bit of a whoa taking a big off-road adventure motorcycle the DS and they're just doing like off-road exercises in them at like five miles an hour just Luke Rice we worried he dropped the GS just doing that it takes a lot of experience to do that good. Moving his body weight around. Uh, see how hard they're working. Oh, we need a doctor. Right. Spin the back wheel! <laughs> really? Ah, uh, spin the back tire! Uh. Slide it! Yeah, baby! Yeah! You like to slide it! Yeah! Thank you. 
shower, and it will stop here. From here, we're going to get a bike around us, off the hill, so we're going to go. So I'm going to come off the bike, it's much safer off the bike. I'm going to use the clutch only to nice and smoothly bring it on back. Nice, slow movements, extra clutch practice. Coming back, if you notice now, I'm always leaving the bike into the hill. Yeah. If the bike goes wrong, it just crashes into the hill, it's not a problem. If it goes that way, then it is a problem. It's a long way for the bike to fall. So it's like that. Yeah. But having a long way for it to fall. Just showing a bit of off road, what it's like to be off road on a massive adventure motorcycle like that. Very cool. Let's go and see who else we can find. Probably want to go back in this direction. Let's see who else we find here a motorcycle live. <laughs> okay, so at Motorcycle Live, we are now at the Herald stand. So, this is a Chinese manufacturer as well. And they do little 125 Huckback motorcycle. It's a bit nostalgia. And they do a bit of off-road. Not many models, but what they do is they concentrate on their models. So we've got a bit of a bronze going on here. Send single cylinder. The looks of things feel injected. Very, very small plush seat. Sheet. Very cool. Harold. Um, off the road example. And it's kind of it really. LED headlights. Okay, so Harold are starting to move over now to LED headlights as well. With just slightly different colour schemes going on. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Got a light cluster of that, baby! Woo! That's very Chinese. <laughs> it's like literally LEDs clustered together. <laughs> I mean, that's literally it. That's all it is. Oh my god, that's that external sauce in bike! Now we're at the Triumph stand here at New Crides. So let's see what Triumph have to offer to 2022 and see what we find. Already Triumph have put on the stage their latest kind of what they would consider a super bike to be, the Steed Triple RR. So it's got, it's quite our old school kind of front bikini lamp at the front and then you've got very short fairings a lot of carbon fiber being the triple engine as well you've got a single sided swing arm with this this kind of spider-esque shape onto it you can see that it definitely does not want a pillion on something like this and that is again that's characteristic of superbike a lot of carbon fiber and as well it looks quite custom really very custom. Olin suspension as well, front and rear. I'm not really talking about what well, about the seat. So you say we'll say about 170 horsepower and uh, a lot of torque. It's kind of like the artwork of super bikes for Britain. And you got another, you've got some wind protection there. Brembo master cylinder up front, Brembo's front and rear, so lots of power there, stopping distance as you race and go really, really fast. 
and a triple so she's going to make a nice noise oh look at this exhaust system a lot of it's like carbon it's like some really weird stuff in the actual pipes themselves massive cat you know if you own if you're lucky enough to own a super bike like this you know you want to delete the cat and get rid of it that's something you're going to do anyways. And then you have the same version of the triple 1200cc, but you have it in white. The red is is the right colour. You can just tell it's just very fitting for a motorcycle like that. And then you have the super naked version. So you've got the speed triple 1200R. A lot of carbon fibre going on here. Matte finish. And, uh, difficult to keep clean. So that's a bit of a disappointment. But it's got a bit of troll going on here with slashes of your neon yellow bit going on there. Massive, massive Olins, massive front brakes. Let's see what it's like to actually sit on a speed triple R. Uh, definitely don't get on with the this. It's just not it's not the right thing. They're supposed to be they're supposed to actually be mirrors. Um, but um, that's the weirdest switch button we've ever seen. Uh, how are you doing know what it does? What is it? It's so clustered. <laughs> That's confusing. Uh, cruise control mode button. Uh, glossy instrument display, so you're going to get a bit of reflection from it. Massive wide tank as well, it's quite shaped like that. And got this like twin spark frame. Quite low, quite low. You kind of can only put one foot down, which is interesting. And then very thin grips, very thin handlebars. Let's go, eh? Brakes feel quite powerful. Really, it's the engine that engulfs Speed Triple 1200. Really, literally, all focuses on that massive engine. Suspension as well. Rear shock is kind of like this. And same very strange coating inside the exhaust system. Slipper clutch, the standard, which is very important. Quite long contrasting stitch going on there. And then you've got kind of your evil black version, Speed Triple RS, which is, I don't know. It's the difference between Speed Triple RS and that. Uh, oh right, so this is like the this is like the smaller version. Get yeah, a quick shifter. Beautiful paint finish though. Yeah, very pretty paint finish. Thank you, dude. And then you got Triumphs race bikes. Got tigers. Whoa. 901. Oh my god, look how thin that look that's not even tire. That's like some sort of like cotton. That's not like rubber. That's like something else. Oh my god. Look at it. Literally they put an engine together and put a fuel tank and bits and wheels together. Huh? God, it would have been expensive. Uh, the rocket and then you have kind of that heart back kind of old school styling scrambler shotgun exhaust at the side the styling going on there uh, then you have the Bonneville it's okay uh, then you have Bonneville speed matters like you like a cruiser it's like a very fancy retro kind of old school cruiser 
and then you've got a, like a dragster you can now literally engine just engulfs the entire thing and it's all you look at is the engine <laughs> imagine put a titanium system on that puppy oh yeah they were like bang 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 <laughs> oh my god imagine that yeah single sided swing arm lots of torque lots of power about 160 horsepower but then once you remove the cat and have a lovely titanium system map the engine go for a dyno tune that's definitely going to be much more than 160 horsepower oh my god even look at the transmission it's just huge shaft drive probably because chain couldn't take the stress <laughs> great oval fuel tank Massive radiators, massive radiators up front. Although they're going to get dirty quite quickly. So if you notice that all the rubbish from the road is going to be thrown by the front tire right into that. And it's, it's going to be very really difficult to try and keep it clean. But let's we'll see what happens if you sit on something like this. It's kind of triumph, but it's kind of a mix of like old school. Old school, old school, bit of super naked going on here. Then you've got naked, and then you've got super bike, which is kind of the new speed tripper, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah. And then you've got tigers, which is kind of your adventure, off-roady sort of boring cycles. Very expensive. I think you pay. The reason why it's so expensive is just because it's so unique. That's what it is. It's just so different. That Triumph know that they can charge quite a lot for something like this. And you have all that, yes, you have all that power and torque. But if you want performance, still a super ball, a super super sport would absolutely destroy the rocket fleet it would fucking decimate it and superbike well it has no chance so it's kind of it's just a styling thing it's really you do you you buy something like this just because it looks interesting but it's not it's not exotica it's not exotica. It's not. It's just not exotica. It's not. You don't scream for something like this. You don't. Superbike? Ha! Huh, exotica. This not exotica. Let's see what it feels like. Oh my god, your tank's fucking huge! Very close to you. Very, very close. Wide bars. Like you feel very far away from them. Aluminium something. Woo! Bopper. Aluminium. Aluminium bar. It feels so big. Reassuring ships. Really reassuring. You know you're changing gear, you can feel it. Yeah. Very slick gearbox. Very slick. Bit huge. I. Who cares when you feel comfortable in something like this? It's like it's trying to be. It's like it's like Triumph saying, "Let's build a Harley Davidson." It's not Harley Davidson, but we're kind of like building Harley Davidson. It's just Triumph. Badge is Triumph. It doesn't excite you, does it? just doesn't. 
it's not Superbike. I think you, you have to be a very particular sort of biker to want to ride some of this. And it's very expensive. And I get why, because it's it's very rare, it's the biggest engine capacity of a motorcycle, shaft drive, the way it's designed, I get why it's so much. Brambo, Brembo's up front, Brembo rears, massive disc, but you need it because it's so long and fucking all that mass. Yeah. And you just know you can have all that torque and power, but you still would be destroyed by a super sport super bike. So what's the point? And then as you move on, again we have the Tigers. Very comfortable off-road. New design headlights going on here with the latest Tigers. It's like this just Cylon beam. GT Pro. Woo. Uh, 900, it's a base mold, and that's kind of all Triumph are doing at the moment. It is just their remit. So let's go back. So what Triumph are bringing into 2022 is the latest, as the first ever proper superbike, but also the Super Naked triumph tigers um, are having a bit of a headlight revision and just some electronic upgrades and a bit of nostalgia with bomber bobbers and then the speed triples which are super naked so that's kind of all triumph doing at the moment and do you know what that's okay that is their thing that is just how triumph work that is just their style Let's move on. This one is a bit of a random one here at Luke Rides. CF Moto. So, this is a 300 SR. I mean, it's got Bosch stands across the side. It's got like racing colours on it. It's got headlights, lights that look like something from Bamboo. And uh, they've got a 650 Adventure. They also have. Another adventure, panniers. And they have a naked. 650s. So they're using a lot of twin engines. And another twin. God, look at that. That's like alien, alien. Is it like an alien? No! Um, and then you've got race version. Then you've got Huh. And Chinese upside down for. Power company. Huh. Chinese. Interesting. A Chinese company trying to show China can build some pretty impressive motorcycles. Okay, that is CF Moto for you, everybody. Next stage here at New Cries is we're now looking at Norton. So Norton had a very, very bad time. The CEO of the company screwed over his customer base. Norton was at a point where the customers lost faith. It was all very bad. They lost so much money and literally the brand was close to collapsing. And then another man bought the brand to try and keep it alive and inject money into Norton to stop it from going to the, like literal bankruptcy and another motorcycle manufacturer British one that wouldn't survive 
when we already have so few as it stands. So this is Norton's Superbike, the V4 SV. It's kind of... I know, it's... It's got big eyes. <laughs> I mean, look at it, it's like... Like, aluminium frame, that's quite nice. Chrome styled as well. You don't often see superbike frames like that. A lot of carbon fibre going on here. And then you've got a custom artwork along the sides. Beautiful seat. Really pretty seat. A lot of chrome. Digital display. Massive Olin front forks. Massive cooling radiators. Massive. 1200cc V4. Eight, eight fuel injectors, just like a ZX10 Superbike. And 185 horsepower standard, so once you delete the cap and give it a full titanium system, you're going to be hitting more like 192, 195 horsepower and a buttload of torque. Massive Brembo's. Massive. <laughs> Aerospace. Aerospace machines. Jesus. Bloody hell, look at that. Well, it's a very exquisite bit of art. As a superbike and race bike, you know it is going to be uh, violent and very scary and going to be very epic. And being a V4, it's going to sound very yummy. But uh, yeah, that is the Norton single size swing arm. Love the red wheels. And then you get to kind of more classic, massive twin cylinder. Massive. Air cooled. 961cc engine. Very black, analog dials, Rembos. Nice stuff going on there. And then as we come along here, a bit of elegant, elegant grassy, grassy going on here. Uh, so you do that. Um, right, that's pretty much. I mean, so pretty much Norton are just down to two models. Pretty much. Superbikes. And a proper retro uh, classic heart pack. And that is Norton for you, everybody, here at Motorcycle Life. We move on to Harley Davidson, the United States of America. So, let's see what Norton have for us today. Oh my god, look at that headline. It's like an alien. Alien. Davidson's first attempt at an electric motorcycle. Look at the cooling fins! I mean, they're freaking huge! They're like massive fins! Just to call the electric batteries on the knees. Huge amount of torque, lots of power, full digital display, LED headlights, Brembo's front and rear. Very, very powerful. LED indicators. It doesn't say approximately what sort of range you get. But a matte finish, which is not easy to keep clean. Ah, then you've got the gloss version. Black. Right. 
Ah, oh, HD. Oh, the Davidson favorite. Look at those cylinders. Oh, like, woo! 1250 cc's. But the exhaust pipe is not very thick, not very big. It's got that alien jerk headlight. 150 horsepower, that is quite powerful. I think that is the kind of a touring venture. Look how close the radiator is to seven. I mean, I mean, there's a common thing that what we're looking at is we're looking at the pinnacle of what a petrol engine is now. Just to display which gear feels nice and soft tactile, gonna feel good in a pair of gloves. Light throttle. Circular indicators. Got that. Ooh, and that's a lip up. Yeah, yeah. Got two more. Isn't that interesting? Massive twin cooling fans. I that's why it has to have gas. It doesn't get your fingers in it. The radiator cooling cooling system is right up the front, which is what you'd expect to see on a well on a V twin, a modern V twin, just to keep it nice and cool. Yeah, very very personal. I like the rear light clusters and the modern Harley Davidson, so they do look quite nice. Chain drive. God, Harley Davidson are getting into freaking bicycles now. It's all cruisers. I mean, that's just how it is in the United States of America. 114 air cool. Got shotgun sides. Very orange. LED headlights. No Brembo's though. No Brembo's. Massive, massive gearbox. Massive. Look at the way that the ignition coil to go into one unit that hangs off the side. Ah, right, digital display readout, but... Nice and low. Gold bronze engine. Thick exhaust pipes. Yeah, Sportster S. Very nice. And that is kind of it. That is Harley Davidson. <coughs> so Harley Davidson for 2022 are sticking to their cruisers, sticking to their bombers, sticking to their uh, touring motorcycles, and that long, long handlebars sticking out sometimes, and then low handlebars. And that is kind of what Harley Davidson are doing. So that's what the United States of America is doing comes to the market you know that's cool that is the United States of America way fun ah shotgun shards what baby that shotgun sides for you like that now at the KTM part of motorcycle live where we're gonna see now what KTM are up to what have we got here it's naked. Uh, it's the A50 naked, and I think that it actually looks pretty compact. So the system is kind of it does look like an afterthought, doesn't it? It looks like KTM didn't put any effort in there at all. So this is the Duke, but it's a beautiful front end. But oh man, is this tall! Whoa, why is it so tall, man? Very tall. It's 
small. Just to display read out. Switch gear feels tough, fast though. Not smooth. I mean, that feels really rough. And then it doesn't. Yeah. So what Luke Wright can tell you about a KTM, just sitting on the middle of the road, A90, which is like, It just feels chintzy. Feels cheap. It can have all this beautiful white paintwork and orange frame, but it just feels cheap. Long chain as well. Massive parallel twin. That is gonna be um that's gonna be pretty powerful. And then we go to the KTM Super Naked. 1290 Super Duke. It's a 1290cc V twin, massive exhaust pipes you'd expect from Super Naked. Look how thick they are compared to something like that. Real thick pipes. Single sided swing arm, upright shock, which is different. But matte finish, which is a pain in the butt to keep clean. That is a shame. Matte finish. No. Oh. And a KTM style. It is pretty. It is pretty. Oh, okay, Luke Roy leaves it. 180 horsepower. Take into account that's with the cat installed and the standard system. So once you've removed the cat, gone full titanium right now at the back yeah and tunes to dino jet and the computer mapped that's definitely over 180 horsepower that's fucking insane on the super naked the only can really the really is any good at 100 miles an hour and no more than that I mean, so this is quite so it's something to have to play with on a Saturday, Sunday, just going out for a right cycle ride. Massive Brembo's up front, massive brakes. Because you need that stopping power. The acceleration torque. Oh. Yeah. Certainly needs deleting. But kind of Alcantara-esque feel on the seat. It was very smooth. And easy to read instrument cluster. And then you got the 890. 12, 125. Very small. And then you got your off road beast. Whoa, the 690. Woo! That is frightening off road. That will just spin its rear tyre, and you don't even know it until it's too late. That's how much torque and power on something that's made out of aluminium. The lightness. Metal pegs as well, which is fantastic. You want metal pegs on an off road motorcycle, but you can barely put your foot down. It's so tall. Christ did consider this as a replacement for the XT, but it's very, very tall. You can only barely put one foot down. And then what, of course, in our, in our country, you've got canvas and hills and all that sort of stuff. So not being able to at least get your one foot down well is um, you'd risk it at that point. You just risk it. It's going to work out or not. Again, cheap feeling gear. I mean... Maybe it's just a KTM thing, it just feels cheap. Even though this is among the last of the big single cylinders. I mean this is this is the last of them. That's it. There's just after this there's Husk apart from Husqvarna, there's nobody else. I love the rear section though as well. Remus. 
get your finger in the hole. <laughs> no puns intended. And that is just, love the big exhaust pipe as well. You can actually see how thick the exhaust system is because of that massive single cylinder engine that very few manufacturers make now. Very, very few. I think it is. I mean, the, the, that's the problem is that this is where the suspension is jacked down. And there's no give, you can see it in the forks, no give. Try and lower her just a little bit. But, one of the best, most exotic, most beautiful Enduros you can buy today. And then you've got like your Super Duke GTs. Take that. It's massive 12, it's massive 1200. And it's got a ditty little pipe screen on it. Shit. Why? The Adventure 390 KTM race bikes RC80 Only 127 horsepower And that is pretty much it. So for 2022, KTM are sticking to their Super Duke 1290 Super Naked, uh, their Adventure Taurus, their Middleweight 890, and uh, sticking to the big last single cylinders. And that's pretty much it for KTM. We go to Suzuki, a motorcycle live. So let's see what Suzuki have to offer us in 2022. Uh, off-road bike, off-road bike. Going back in time. But, yeah, scooters. Adventure tourers quite popular it seems at the moment. Super Tora. Ah, the new Hayabusa. New Hayabusa Busi. See ya. Oh. Poor manufacturers having to stick to Euro 5. Just. Yeah. Yeah. It's very long. I mean, that's the thing you don't expect. It's actually, it's very, very long. Very long. Very long. Very Tora. Things wide. Nice crossover with the red against the silver. Mm. You have to be careful of that section there, not scuffle with it. You've got like, oh. Cheap switch here. Feel it. Just feels cheap. Love the analog dials though. Very hard back to the 2000s. You certainly wouldn't want to do something about this exhaust system because it is not only ugly but heavy. And that heavy cat as well. Unleash this beast. One massive. Super Tora. Let's see what it's like to actually sit on the Hayabusa. Oh my god. Do you know what? Actually, Kawasaki H2SX feels more compact and focused than this. The Suzuki just feels big. It feels big, very big, very wide. It just wants to. 
know. It'd be very powerful and for a performance motorcycle it would be nice. It would be nice. It would be nice. But that's all you feel you can say about the hybrid stuff. It's just kind of... That's how you're going to be, that's how your legs are going to sit. They're upright. But then she's big, so she's not a super bike, so she's not going to handle... She's got all that power. Is, is Suzuki doing something different? You can kind of see why. It gives the brand something it, it can say it has against everybody else. Apart from that, yeah, it'd be quite interesting to own a massive beast like this is. Very. Very, very big risk. Oh, it's a big risk. Oh, it's a big Wow. Wow. That is shocks. But anyway. Wow. Huh? Hello. Katana. Which is actually a Japanese battle sword. Based on the old toilet. Lovely seat. Lovely seat. Okay. Um. Uh, and then you've got your classics. Great classics. GSXR 1000R, which is Suzuki Superbike. And then 125. And then the Hayabusa in white. I could probe the cans. Very nice. Very pretty. And then Suzuki's attempts at making a sport tourer to contend with the likes of Kawasaki on the Z1000SX. Very big. A lot going on. Just be worried about scuffing those panniers up. Very worried about scuffing the panniers up. Right. So that is Suzuki. So literally in 2022, uh, the biggest change is the first ever 1000cc sport tourer. And the addition of the latest Hayabusa. Apart from that, sticking to their super bikes, their naked, the 125s, and pretty much it. Bit Ducati going on there. And we have CCM and Motorcycle Live! So, what do CCM have for Motorcycle Live 2022? Uh, we have. Oh, <laughs> okay. very pretty. Oland, and then that one. Um, also have Street Tracker, Dynamo, CCM. Um, it's kind of what do they bring? They're literally like ex KTM plus Gavana engines. I mean, that's what they are. And then, oh, shouldn't be copying Kawasaki now, CCM. Don't be copying Kawasaki. Lots of shotgun shells in the back. Very custom. 
So CCM in 24, 2022 are sticking to their current motorcycles from the RAF version to the back to the street tracker and as well sticking to the current engine capacity and so I mean, that is just pretty much it really that is just CCM um, I haven't really moved on uh, the colour schemes have changed of course and uh, little things like that but apart from that they are saying probably the most prettiest is just this hug back classic motorcycles with the chrome with blue and the RAF Royal Air Force stickers carbon fiber big Brembo's up front and the XKTM Skavana engine so they've got motorcycles notice no air filter per se it's just a it's just a cone um, and that is pretty much it from CCM here I'm Motorcycle Live for 2022. See you later. See in 2022 what Royal Enfield have to bring to the party. Uh, yeah, it's a Royal Enfield. Mm. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's have a look. We got old at Royal Enfield, which is just a hark back to how how times used to be. How basic motorcycles are. I mean, look at that. That was a fuel tank. You wouldn't be buying a modern Royal Enfield with that. Uh, okay, so here we go. We have the... Oh, we have a 350cc. Classic. Air-cooled. Nice and compact. It produces so little heat, it doesn't even need a front radiator. Rear shocks. A lot of chrome. Nice colour skin going on here. Ah, and even the speedo is built into the top of the headlight. Even the switch gear is quite interesting because look at it, it's like it's like toggles. Not buttons, it's toggles. Ah. They actually do actually feel Oh yeah, good. and then I said oh Steve Logan's on Steve Logan. Alright. Let's see what gear changes are like in a 350cc gearbox. That's right. Actually, pretty accurate. Pretty good, actually. Huh? Rubber foot peg for the rear brake. Huh? Do you know what is nice to see is that literally Luke rides is on a Royal Enfield. And the switch gear actually feels smoother and nicer than a Japanese-made Suzuki. That is scary. It's nice, just nice smooth action. It's not buttons on chintzy and rough like on the KTMs. It just feels nice. And it's simple. It's just a motorcycle. We're an engine with a beautiful colour scheme and a nice smooth gearbox. It is simple motorcycle tank protectors as well. It's quite nice. And nice rubber pegs there from Royal Enfield again, keep the vibrations down. Especially on these smaller engines that move a lot more. So that's quite nice. And you got chrome, chrome mirrors and all that sort of good stuff. Um, but yeah, it actually does feel quite nice. Even the clutch pedal, uh, clutch lever feels nice. It just feels like a nice place to be. Hmm. Kudos to Royal Enfield. Luke Price did not expect to be saying nice things like that about Royal Enfield. Oh, that's pretty cool. And then you got the GT. You got this like Alcantara esque seat, which is quite nice. Got this kind of chromey fuel cap, but that feels fine. Got the squared off fuel tank, 1200cc, so quite a big engine. Nice feeling switch gear, nice feeling brake. Actually, does feel quite nice. Definitely want to do something about this exhaust system though. 
Oh, we can read it. Go for a nice stainless steel. Um, paint finish is nice and smooth. Very good, very nice and smooth. And it's just got that classic, classic front ends, big side gearbox. And then you've got your different versions, you've got the chrome version. Got what looks like GT. Which is where the the handlebars are straight. Um, and that is pretty much the biggest difference you can see. And the ability to carry panniers. And oh, a lovely Kawasaki man. Uh, <laughs> oh dear. Literally Luke Ryan. More focused on Kawasaki's. Because uh, at least it's, it's amazing. Um, and then you've got your different colour schemes. So for 2022, uh, Royal Enfield are sticking to what they know, and they've just released a new model that's a 350, so that's a little cheaper, a little cheaper, less of an asking price. And what is nice is that Luke Wright is seeing a general quality about the Royal Enfields that is actually coming from BMW Kawasaki's is actually nice to sit on and the switch gear actually feels nice and chrome is nice and the finish is nice and do you know what it's actually nicer than a BSA which is quite interesting so yeah kudos and a thumbs up to Royal Enfield here at Motorcycle Live now we move on to Benelli, Italia, and let's see what the Italians from Benelli have to offer us. They have for 2022 a 502cc naked, and it's got a, it's got a rear rear seat rest, um, tiny pipes at the back, liquid cooled. 502 cc and it does have brembos so that's quite powerful some real meaty brakes there it is just a naked banana uh, then uh, then you've got a throw back. You've got a oh, got a 500cc trial, and then we've got the Venture Touring model, like the analog needle. That's quite nice. No Brembos though, so just brake pads, brake discs, ABS. So your anti-locking brakes are standard. Same engine as used in the Naked, same engine used in that one, and yeah, beautiful. Soft seat, very, very comfy. Switch gear, plasticky and hard, not smooth. So there's a bit of cost saving going on there. So a horrible switch gear. Apart from that, it's kind of got a Ducati Multistrada front as well, even though she's a Benelli, not a Ducati. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of okay. Uh, and then you've got like. Oh. And then you've got uh, Chinese. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that is pretty much Benelli as well. They're sticking to what they know uh, with 500cc engines and building a touring version and a naked as well and little 125s if that's what you're into. And that's where Benelli are. 
and um, you know it's just one of those things Benelli just don't make super bikes anymore they just don't they don't do performance like they used to and that's just how the time has changed the main thing is the brand is very much alive and still kicking and you know go that way and Benelli are proud you know and that's seven seven five two. Do you know what? Well done, minute. Although that is a bit. Don't stick his fingers in there. Child would be like, "Well, let's do Monday." Lose a finger. <laughs> yeah, but at that. No, no guard. You see, no guard. Just expose, stick your fingers in it, fan. Which is very dangerous. How to lose a finger. Yeah, very good at Benelli. Going next here at Luke Wright, we have found Zero. Or oh, what Zero got in store for us in 2022. Now Zero is very different from what we're all very used to. They don't have petrol engines. These are fully electric motorcycles. Now, a funny way to put it is, prepare to hear the sound of the spin cycle. But maybe it's not quite look like that. But what's good, interesting to see is Zero are kind of progressing. That they're moving up, they now have more models than they used to. So let's see what we've got here. This is kind of more, uh, it's like more of an off-roady sort of, or maybe just like a baby Zero. So probably, a, probably like A2 license compliance. They say it's got a range of 100 bars, but that's not always going to be the truth, is it? LED headlights up front, long forks down there. No Brembo's though, so a different brand of calipers and braking systems. No rubber pegs, which is interesting. And what's nice as well is you see the finish on the pegs, it's actually quite nice. I have that black feel and the plastics rubber belts quite different again that's the LED but the indicators are not so this is kind of this must be like the base model let's see what it's like to sit on that whoa we quite felt the suspension go down then so no keyless entry on this one brake reservoir very easy to see switch gear you know what, actually the switch gear feels actually fine. It doesn't feel chintzy, it doesn't feel cheap like some of the KTMs that it rides has met. Mirrors are fairly big. Instrument display, looks like it's got a matte finish. I hope that it won't bring a lot of reflection back. Not much going on here, is there? It's got, kind of got a plastic looking tank seat feels very soft although it is quite thin it is quite thin not very thick it's quite thin design which is uh this is this base model so you're not going to be getting the absolute best out there the there's actually the grips actually have a texture to texture to them which is quite interesting got a mode button here again switch gear feels fantastic and you actually do have buttons to choose from on the digital display. It's quite interesting. So yeah, this feels like, oh no clutch! I mean, I guess you literally have to get used to that on a Zero, because you'd, you'd kind of expect to feel a clutch, but not on an electric motorcycle. Wires are pretty tidy, so even the brake lines look quite tidy, they're not quite in the way. It's nice and tucked away as well. What actually feels quite good, but very thin seat, so that won't be comfortable once you start doing a lot of miles and something like that. But then you won't have the range to do a lot of miles because it's electric. <laughs> They've still got a way to go when it comes to range. A bit of red accent and silver, and then we move on to this one which is, I think, actually Zero's first actual proper Tourer. So it's got quite a wide angle to the headlights. 
LED indicators front and rear, so this one's like an updated model. Even the calipers are big, and the calipers are monoblocks as well, which is quite good. Beautiful paint finish, really nice. The Cypher Plus. Oh, doesn't that sound fancy? Got a bit of fake kind of feeling carbon fiber here. Imagine these may be reflective or illuminated. So far, so good. Massive electric motor, massive battery. Shockers on the sideways. It's quite interesting. Apparently there's a standard and then there's a premium model. The premium model you'd have to get 169 miles. Need a full license. Charge time of about two and a half hours on probably a supercharger. About 110 brake horsepower. But it looks very substantial. Wide bearings, massive screen. So that's going to be quite comfortable. Seat feels very thick. Nice feeling switch gear as well. Feels quite nice. Massive motor. I mean, look at that for an electric motor. It's huge. Rubber belt. I mean, that is kind of for Zero's first attempt at a Sport Tora. Do you know what? Actually, Zero. There's very little you can actually critique. Very little you can actually say, that's rubbish. It looks big, it looks substantial, looks like quite the touring motorcycle. So Zero have now moved on to that. And then you've got kind of off-road version of Zero. So that's your off-road variant. And then you've got this naked, the SR. Massive headlight up front, beautiful paint finish, massive electric battery. I mean, that literally encompasses most of the naked. Pillion. Nice stitching on the seat. Large display, although it is shiny, so it might be a little reflective, which is not a good thing. But it is, for a naked, it is interesting to look at. You have monoblocks on the braking system. Blurry, actually quite a nice looking rear swing arm. And it looks, it looks fast, it just looks naughty. Kudos to Zero for that one. And then as we move across here, we have gone past the off-road version. And you have a DSR Zero, which is like, I don't know, what is it like? Yeah, it's got yeah. off-road tyres, it's like off-road. Yeah. Oh, you got the police version, whoa! We've got a police zero. Okay, zero, how moving on, aren't they? And that's quite a thing for a manufacturer to actually say, we can give you a electric police motorcycle. Police need fast motorcycles. When they go and chase, they need to be faster than anything else on the road. So that's quite interesting. That shows the Zero has moved on a hell of a lot. Massive monoblocks up front. Police lighting up front. Massive headlight unit. Massive headlight unit. Massive forks. Massive motor. Pillion if you need it and a very beautiful paint finish it looks really good beautiful swing arm belt design on the back and the really nice frame as well really nice swing arm down the rear that's actually very interesting zero has done a lot there and then we have the zero s which is kind of like something and that is pretty much it so so 
that is pretty much where Zero is. They've released new models. They're now looking at actually having a touring motorcycle and as well the possibility of having police versions of the Zero. Police versions are electric motorcycles. Zero are moving on and that actually does say quite a lot and kudos to Zero for also going for proper European button style sofas as a name for that as well. But overall, Zero have moved on. Zero are, are upgrading and Zero are expanding what they're doing with the productions and yeah, kudos to them. Well done Zero for moving on. Let's see who else you can find a motorcycle live and do a bit of a log on that one. It's fantastic. Well, let's see who we have next here at Luke Rides. And we're staring at them. We're now looking at Indian motorcycles. So this is the United States of America motorcycle manufacturer, a competitor to Harley Davidson, and kind of their take on what an American motorcycle should be like. We've got a mix of big V twins and a lot of them, some of them are air cool. Love the fact that the massive exhaust pipes are just thick. So it's quite meaty, it's very, very bossy. So we've got again, and we've got another cruiser here. You can tell just by the height of the handlebars, the low seat position, and also you can tell by the gear stick being forward. But we've got a black finish here. We've got a, looks like, it's like a massive section over here. Indian motorcycle standing proud, but there's got a bit of a black theme going on here. And that's not like something that Luke Rides likes. He doesn't like black. It's, it's black only works for Superbike because it's racing. But you have got the Speedo in the middle, which is quite interesting. Uh, this one's quite interesting that Indian didn't put necessarily a a, a platter to tell you all about it, but instead of using these hangers here. Uh, this one is something. It's called a Thunderstroke. <laughs> yeah, okay, Thunderstroke. Keyless entry, you do have cruise control, anti-lock brakes as well. Massive engine casing, uh, Thunderstroke. So when you're looking at, well, let Luke Crowe put it this way, power is not what you look at for something like this. It's more of a style thing. So you have got LED indicators, both front and back. Um, established in 1901, that's when Indian was first company. And then what's interesting is you've got LED indicators, but then you've got halogen lights. Um, that's quite interesting. Indian platter over the front mud guard. It makes you think that kind of health and safety would tell you that you can't have that on a motorcycle, but somehow Indian got away with it, European regulations. Aluminium slats in the alloy wheels. And then you've got massive, massive footrests as well for your pillion. Thick seat as well with a bit of Indian and nice contrasting going on there. Matte black finish, so that would be a real bugger to try and keep clean. Mats are really annoying to try and keep clean. Standard calipers, no mono blocks whatsoever. Massive, uh, massive cylinder heads. And they look like push rods, which is like very old school technology. And then you've got massive exhaust pipes, big fuel tank as well. And the mirrors are small, but actually do give you a lot of information, which is quite interesting. So yeah, Indian's taken what a cruiser should be. And as a cruiser, ah, uh, oh, Luke Fright knows it's just gonna be quite epic. You just know it. And by the looks of things, there is no chain, so be the belt drive or shaft drive one or two uh, probably shaft drive but also a lot of Indian motorcycles also use belts for the drive so there's only one way to know uh, this one is a little bit more war so 
you have got Brembo's up front, some massive stopping power, red trim as well around the alloy wheels with slats of aluminium. You can see this is quite an expensive cruiser. Uh, the seat doesn't seem any different, very thick, very comfortable, very touring, absolutely huge. Uh, that matte finish again, which is, oh god, it's not, not great at trying to keep clean. Uh, a massive 25. £25,000 which is quite a lot I and mean, that's like super bike money and you know you've got to consider that and go that's super bike money you, do you want to spend that when you can have a super bike you could have a super Toro like the H2SX now all of a sudden it's kind of like I don't know but this is kind of Indian's pinnacle of what a cruiser should be so what you have is vast Fast wind protection over here, so no buffering at all. It's just going to be absolute bliss being in the cabin. Um, but you've got that. You've got also the Indian logo, which is now like styled and does a lot more detail into it. So Indian are quite proud of it. You kind of need those massive Brembo's just to stop this thing. Um, you actually have your own entertainment and audio system as well. Um, you have an onboard computer system that's got lots of Bluetooth onboard speakers navigation built in and a host of other electronic upgrades which is epic but you still have a classic analog speedo and rev counter which is which is different uh, this one appears to actually be liquid core by the looks of things how do you tell you can just tell by the engine casing so if you look at the engine casing power plus engine the americans are very funny aren't they long haul seats, weatherproof saddlebags, race back, performance touring, yeah, I can play it, yeah, it, is, it literally is just, yeah, it's just going to give you everything you want if, if cruising is all you're into. Um, 1800cc V twin, liquid cooled as well, you can also tell because if you look in here you've got a, quite a big radiator over there with cooling fans as well massive engine casing and uh, twin exhaust pipes at the back which are nicely positioned nicely styled as well you just know you want to get delete the catalytic converter and just let that be twin sing uh, so there's that so what else are, are Indian up to wow this is actually something that uh, you actually should be proud of when it comes to Indian so what you have here and this is kind of a lot more Luke rides kind of what he's a lot more into so this is like Indian super naked so you've got this shotgun style do you know what that reminds Luke rides of a Ducati monster 1100 super naked shotgun shells at the back uh, interesting how the shocks positioned as well but it's very red which is very very pretty and you've got massive monoblocks up the front as well which is you know, very high performance Thick shocks, LED headlights as well with main beam. You also then have the digital display which here at Luke Rides we are at Husqvarna which is also pretty much owned by KTM. So a lot of the engines that Husqvarna use are shared from the KTM range. So let's see what Husqvarna have for us at Motor Live 2021. We have the Okay, no European can say that name very well. So, Husqvarna 125, and it is naked, so you've got no frame whatsoever, no fairings whatsoever. Black frame, matte paintwork, and a offshoot of Brembo but you do have some pretty lovely apex suspension going on here so that's quite nice very high performance that is and can't tell if the rear shock is also apex but it may be and then you've got this quite Husqvarna plaque here because imagine Husqvarna are just proud to still be a motorcycle manufacturer and still be alive. You've got an integrated rear light cluster as well, which is nice. You've got it's nice steel. Oh, everybody. <laughs> all right. All right, coming up. 
Thank you for watching everybody at Luke Rides. We are now at the very end of Motorcycle Live. It is now over. So we have to wait until 2022 before Motorcycle Live is going to come back to us. And Luke Rides is blown away. He only can say good things. It was epic seeing all the manufacturers from Kawasaki, Ducati, BMW and seeing what's in store for us in 2022. Feeling the machines, getting to touch and feel the latest ZX10 R Superbike and also meeting the Ducatis, meeting all of the small manufacturers, meeting the shops, meeting the uh, Institute of Advanced Motorists, the new heat and visor insert technology from uh, Vizen and just epic and so much to take in and if you are a petrol head and you are a proper biker you love anything with an engine and two wheels you literally not even three days feels like enough of mental cycle life you feel like even more than that but like anything you gotta have your fun and then you gotta get back to back to the rest of your life and wow New client is looking forward to and um, wants to be here for 2022 Mayors of the Life and also do his breast to see if we can bring the client's queen, his amazing wife, his goddess, his Mira D, his baby, his Lapuna Chan to this and we can go here there together. Well, we're all going to miss Motorcycle Life, but now I must say tally ho and goodbye here at the Luke Rides. Yeah, they like Luke Rides, you see the double, double, double barrel and Luke Rides, Rides, Rides. <laughs> oh, let's just hope it's not freezing fracking cold out there, because you just know it will be. Joys of being in Europe, and it's freezing fracking cold if you're in the north. <laughs> Let's get ourselves to the Junior Supercar, the BMW, and make our way back to base for a long, long drive. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next episode of the channel. The way we... The little rascal has spirit. That's awesome. This is the end of the trail for me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, kid. Motorcycle Live for what will be next year's models 2022. Um, you know, Honda are so not interesting that their only interesting thing is literally their latest Superbike, is the latest Fireblade. But then a Superbike, it's going to be. It's a lot of pretty killer and all that insanity. But apart from that, see, Honda didn't even stick to Brembo's. And you, know, you would find a ZX10 Superbike with Brembo's. You'd find a BMW with Brembo's. But not on a Honda. Hmm. Yeah, see what the rides means. They're very uninteresting. I mean, you just kind of have CDR and. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, let's put it this way. Let's put it this way for 2022. Literally, Honda haven't changed and are so uninteresting and boring. Um, yeah, they are. They're so uninteresting and boring. They are not even worth mentioning here at Luke Price. Serious. Uh, Luke Price, kid you not, they're literally so boring that not even going to be mentioned on the channel. Ooh, bad mark for Honda.